Can you believe the racing history behind the Daytona International Speedway? The Daytona 500 is one of the most well-known races in the United States and always has an epic ending. For decades, we've been entertained by this 500 mile long race in Daytona Beach. As the race is upcoming once again, we are going to take a look into the history of the Speedway and this incredible race. Join us as we race through the history of this NASCAR spectacular event. The history of the prestigious Daytona 500 and the history of the International Speedway all began with Bill France Sr. He took his first meeting about the event and the racetrack on December 14, 1947 at the Streamline Hotel in Daytona Beach. Here, he discussed with several other businessmen the future of stock car racing, NASCAR, and the Daytona Beach area. See, the thing about Florida in the 1950s and 40s was it was pretty lawless and it was not the tourist destination we know today. Now we know people go to Florida for everything from sporting events, to vacations, to the beaches, to the theme parks. But prior to this, it wasn't like that. And because of the lack of rules, laws, and structure, many people would take to the beaches, specifically in Daytona, and race their stock cars. However, Bill France understood the value of Florida as a tourist destination, and he also understood that the days of racing stock cars on the beach were numbered. It was no longer just Miami that was a tourist destination in the state of Florida. It was going to become Central Florida, North Florida, and South Florida. The entire state was going to become a tourist destination, and Bill France understood that. France would sign a deal with the city of Daytona Beach and Volusia County to build the Daytona International Speedway. France not only wanted a racetrack, he wanted the center of the world of racing to be in Daytona Beach. The next step France would have would be funding the project. It would cost over $3 million to construct a track and France would rely on that of sponsorship money. He would reach out to Pepsi, General Motors, and a Texas oil mogul. France would be so strapped for cash when he attempting to build this new racing center that he would even have to take out a second mortgage on his house and sell stock shares to local residents. One interesting thing to note from the sponsorship aspect is that France had reached out to Coca-Cola several times to become a sponsor and fund the new International Speedway. However, they would decline several times, which would make France have a grudge and refuse to serve Coca-Cola products in his stadium. The concept of the Daytona 500 race had its origins in a shorter race that was held on the Daytona Beach road course prior to the creation of the Speedway. The earliest forms of races held around Daytona would be around 200 miles long with stock cars. But once the new speedway was created, the beach was no longer needed. It would not be until 1959 that the first Daytona 500 would be held. This would be the second 500 mile race in a NASCAR schedule behind the Southern 500. The 1959 race would be a hit for the Daytona International Speedway with over 40,000 spectators coming to watch. As it was still the early days of NASCAR, it did have a unique mix of hardtops and convertibles in the race. The first ever Daytona 500 was more than just memorable. It was iconic. It had a photo finish with the wrong champion going to the victory lane. 61 hours later, it would be realized that Lee Petty was the actual winner of the race. And this would spearhead the Petty dynasty in NASCAR. With that, the first Daytona 500 was in the books and it was one of the most memorable races up to that date. After the inaugural race of the Daytona 500, it would become a key aspect on a NASCAR schedule for the season and would be a key part of Florida tourism. They would dub the race the Great American Race. They wanted the Daytona 500 to become part of Americana. The next big race that would occur on the Daytona International Speedway would come on July 4th, 1959. This race would be known as a Firecracker 250. The name would come from the fact that it would be centered around July 4th, Independence Day. The focus would make it more than just a race, but a spectacle for racing fans and tourists in the area, with the addition of fireworks at the end. The decades that followed, the Firecracker race would be morphed and changed into the Coke Zero 400, which is ironic to say the least. The 1960s would bring two other unique races to the International Speedway, the first in 1961, the Daytona 200 Motorcycle Classic. Prior to this, the Motorcycle Classic would actually have a lot of success on the beaches of Daytona, but again, it would have to move to the International Speedway for the success to continue. In 1962, 
probably one of the most unique races would be added to the Daytona International Speedway, the Rolex 24. This would be through IMSA and would be a 24-hour sports car endurance race. For fans, this would be called 24 Hours of Daytona. In 1979, it was determined to spread NASCAR further, they would have to utilize television. They would have their first national broadcast of the Daytona 500 race on CBS. It would become the first 500 mile auto race to be televised from flag to flag, meaning there would be no interruption in the event. It would be held on CBS until the early 2000s and would always have great ratings. Even though the track would get updates and new races over the decades, in 1998 the track would have its biggest update, the addition of lights for the Coke Zero 400. At the time, gave the Daytona International Speedway the crown for the largest lit sports facility in the world. To wrap things up, it's important to note that the International Speedway has not only been the host of major racing events, but also other sports. Bethune-Cookman would host games there in 1974 and 1975. In 2022, soccer would be held there as well, most notably with the Orlando City Pride hosting a match there. Over the decades, the races, the events, and the matches may have changed at the Daytona International Speedway, but there's no denying the overall impact it's had for NASCAR and the tourism market of Florida. Thanks so much for watching.